Ladies and gentlemen. This episode is sponsored by Advanced Skills Company, the official agent of JPI Healthcare in Iraq. I personally use the products of JPI Healthcare in my clinic for years now, and throughout the years, these products have been amazing in terms of providing excellent image quality at the lowest radiation dose possible, and they are durable, reliable, and efficient. I recommend if you are looking to establish your radiology practice, whether in a clinic, in a center, or in a hospital setting, to go to the JPI Healthcare website, see their products for yourself, and then call Advanced Skills Company if you are in Iraq, and these guys will provide the best possible solutions, whether in terms of hardware or software. I will leave the contact information in the video description, and don't forget to use the magic word highlights in radiology, because you will get a 10% discount on all JPI Healthcare products till the end of 2024. Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of the new season of Highlights in Radiology. In this season, I decided that we will talk about different topics all related to musculoskeletal radiology. So, we will present 12 episodes, each of them talking about a different subject in musculoskeletal imaging. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and tell your friends about us. This is Dr. Ahmad Abdul Wahab, and this is Highlights in Radiology Season 2. Stay with me. In this episode, we will talk about multiple myeloma. Multiple myeloma is a monoclonal neoplastic proliferation of plasma cells. It involves the bone marrow. Multiple myeloma is the most common primary bone tumor. It represents up to 40% of all bone tumors. Most commonly, it presents somewhere between 40 to 80 years of age with an average of 64 years. It's more common in males than females. Most common presentation is with mild transient bone pain worsening by activity in up to 75% of patients. Multiple myeloma is usually a fatal disease leading to death within one to five years from the time of diagnosis. Other possible presentations include a palpable mass, which can be in an extra osseous location associated with hemorrhage, anemia, fever, weight loss, and tendency to bleed with features of hypercalcemia, which can progress to the level of renal failure. Multiple myeloma is usually treated by chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and supportive care, including internal fixation of any pathologic fracture. Multiple myeloma usually presents as multiple well-defined intramedullary lytic lesions that can be located in any bone containing red marrow. Most common locations of multiple myeloma lesions include the skull, the spine, the ribs, the femur, the pelvis, and the humerus. Well, if you see here, this is a lumbar spine CT scan of a multiple myeloma patient. You can see the multiple lytic well-defined lesions within the vertebral bone marrow. Also, this is a pelvis x-ray of another patient, and you can see these lytic well-defined lesions. We can see also the ribs. So there are some lytic lesions here and there. And if you look at the skull x-ray, it's beautifully demonstrated in the multiple lytic punched out lesions. Also, this is a shoulder x-ray, and you can see the lytic lesions that represents the multiple myeloma lesions. Rarely, multiple myeloma patients can present in an extraskeletal location, and this includes the lungs, nasopharynx, and even the oral cavity. It ranges from a few millimeters to several centimeters in diameter. Multiple myeloma lesions appear as a sharply demarcated lytic intramedullary lesions. Plasma cytoma is an early stage of multiple myeloma, and it presents as a solitary, large, expensile lesion. Like we can see here, this is a CT scan of the pony pelvis showing a large lytic lesion in the left iliac wing, and it's destructive, and this was the only lesion in this patient, so it represents a plasma cytoma. If a patient presents with a single lytic lesion or plasma cytoma, look carefully for any additional lesions, because 
The presence of more than one lesion will change the prognosis immediately from stage one to stage three. Again, multiple myeloma presents radiologically as multiple lytic punched out lesions. We describe them as punched out. Lesions of multiple myeloma can cause endosteal scalloping, cortical erosions, but typically there is no periosteal newborn formation. If you look at this CT scan of a multiple myeloma patient, this is city of the femur bone, of course, you can see this endosteal scalloping these areas of punched out erosions. These are typical for multiple myeloma. Multiple myeloma can also present as a soft tissue mass adjacent to an area of bone destruction. Multiple myeloma can present even as diffuse osteopenia or osteolysis, and it can cause extruated trabecular pattern. Like we see here, this is a CT scan of the pelvis and it shows a large soft tissue mass with an area of bone destruction in the right area queen. This is a case of multiple myeloma. Also, you can see in this X-ray, we can see the lumbar spine with diffuse osteopenia, and this was a case of multiple myeloma also. In the ribs, pelvis, and lung bones, it may present as an osteolytic lesion, while in the vertebral body, in the spine, it can present as vertebral collapse with the sparing of the posterior elements. So keep in mind, multiple myeloma tends to spare the posterior elements of the vertebrae. For example, if we look at this MRI image, we can see the vertebral bodies of the lumbar vertebrae are collapsed. However, the posterior elements, like the spinous processes, for example, are preserved. They are not collapsed. This is in favor of multiple myeloma. It also can present as paraspinal mass with an extra dural extension. After treatment, it usually heals by sclerosis. This CT scan of the vertebrae, you can see there is a paraspinal mass that extends into the spinal canal, forming an extra dural extension of the mass. So what radiology can offer in cases of multiple myeloma? CT scan will be helpful in evaluating intra and extra osseous extension. And on MRI, these lesions will show intermediate to low signal to the surrounding bone marrow in T1 weighted imaging, while it will show increased signal intensity on T2 weighted imaging and on STIR. After contrast injection, the lesions tend to show post contrast enhancement. The signal abnormality of multiple myeloma can be focal or diffuse, and it can be associated with soft tissue masses. For example, in this MRI, you can see this is a T1 and a T2 weighted image with the corresponding CT scan of the lumbar vertebrae in a multiple myeloma patient. And here we can easily see the lesions and they appear hypo-intense on T1 weighted images and they appear hyper-intense on T2 weighted images. And in the CT scan, you can see the multiple lytic punched out lesions. While in this MRI, we will see the lesions that appear hyper intense on T2 weighted imaging, hyper iso intense on T1 weighted imaging with post contrast enhancement. One of the associated abnormalities of multiple myeloma patients is Bowen syndrome. Bowen syndrome composed of polyneuropathy, organomegaly, endocrine disorders, monoclonal gammopathy, and skin changes. Also, it can be associated with enthesopathies and sclerotic fossae resembling bone islands or ivory vertebral bodies. In this X-ray of the pelvis, we can see multiple tiny sclerotic lesions looking like bone islands. And in this X-ray of the humerus, you can see also the bone island looking lesions. These are features of bone syndrome, which can be associated with multiple myeloma. Amyloidosis can also be associated with multiple myeloma, and it is seen in about 10 to 15% of patients. So what's the differential diagnosis of multiple myeloma? Well, we have a nice list here, including metastasis, osteoporosis, hemangioma, lymphoma, leukemia, Langerhans cell histiocytosis, and kosher disease. Regarding metastasis, metastasis is the number one differential diagnosis of multiple myeloma. However, metastases tend to show involvement of the pedicles of the vertebrae, while in multiple myeloma, involvement of the pedicle is usually a late event. Also, in metastasis, bone destruction is ill-defined, while multiple myeloma tend to show more well-defined pattern of bone destruction. For example, let's see this MRI. This is a sagittal T2-weighted image and axial T2-weighted image. It shows the lesions involving mainly the pedicle of the vertebrae. The pedicle is involved with an irregular pattern of bone destruction. This is a feature of metastasis more than multiple myeloma. The second differential diagnosis is osteoporosis. 
Multiple myeloma can present as generalized loss of bone density, but in osteoporosis, there is no industrial scalloping, no cortical destruction, and no any associated masses. For example, in this CT scan, we can see there's a diffuse loss of bone density, but there are no bone lesions, no signs of cortical destruction, no soft tissue masses, so this is just a generalized diffuse osteoporosis. Next on the list of differential diagnosis is hemangioma. Hemangioma will show vertical striations and honeycomb appearance with high signal intensity on both T1 and T2 weighted images, which corresponds to the vascular component and usually there is no soft tissue mass. If we look at this CT scan, we can see this polka dot sign, we call it polka dot sign of multiple vertical striations taken in axial sections. You can see it on the sagittal CT scan, there are multiple vertical striations. This is corresponds to hemangioma. Also, if you look at this MRI, you can see this is a T1 and T2 weighted images of the cervical spine and you can see this hyper intense lesion on both T1 and T2 weighted images of the vertebral body corresponding to a hemangioma. Regarding lymphoma, usually it presents as an ivory bone or ivory vertebra and in the flat bones it shows cancellous bone erosion which is the earliest sign of lymphoma. The cortical destruction in lymphoma tends to occur late in the disease. For example, if you look at this X-ray, you can see this ivory vertebra. It means it's completely sclerotic and it's a feature of lymphoma. Regarding leukemia, usually we see multiple well-defined osteolytic lesions with coarse trabeculations and a smooth laminated sunburst pattern of periosteal reaction. Like in this pelvis X-ray, you can see there are multiple clearly well-defined osteolytic lesions with coarse trabeculation throughout the bony pelvis. Regarding Langerhans cell histiocytosis, it happens in younger age group than multiple myeloma, and it's a self-limiting disease. Like for example, on this skull x-ray, you can see there are multiple lytic lesions involving the skull. It looks like multiple myeloma, however, this is a young child, and it's definitely not the age of multiple myeloma. Regarding Gaucher disease, it also happens in a younger age group and it tends to present with generalized osteopenia, honeycomb appearance with earlier myelin flies deformity with no associated soft tissue masses. For example, in this X-ray, you can see there is generalized osteopenia involving both femora with the earlier myelin flies deformity. Also, you can see on this MRI image, the bone marrow is abnormal with earlier myelin flies deformity. Another example in this X-ray, you can see clearly the earlier myeloflans deformity. Well, guys, this is all for today's episode. At the end, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and tell your friends about us. If you have any comments, write them in the comment section. See you next Friday at 5 p.m. This was Dr. Ahmad Abdul Abdulwahab, and this is Highlights in Radiology Season 2. Bye.